Family Theater presents Ricardo Montalban and Marshall Thompson. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Ricardo Montalban and Lillian Baeff in Joaquin Murrieta. To introduce the drama, your host, Marshall Thompson. Thank you, Gene Baker. Family's theater only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray Pray together as a family. Probably the most picturesque, exciting, and romantic 10 years in American history were those of the years of the gold rush in California. They have been immortalized in fiction by the pens of Mark Twain and Bret Hart, but the bravery and daring of their fictionalized heroes pale and insignificance under the spell of an actual hero of those times. For not since the days of Robin Hood has there been the glamour, the intrigue, the dashing romance that is synonymous with the name of Joaquin Murrieta. Yes, Joaquin Murrieta, an outlaw whose exploits have become legend, a man of whom 10,000 tales have been told and remains a mystery till this day despite that. Tonight, Family Theater stars Ricardo Montalban in an episode from the fabulous life of Joaquin Murrieta. Buenas tardes, amigos. So you wish to learn something about this man, Joaquin Murieta, huh? <laughs> well, I do not blame you. For the stories about him are as numerous and different as the brown hills, the snow-capped mountains, and the lush green valleys of the California country he loved so well. So then, where can we start to learn about this outlaw? To Alumne, San Diego, Mono Lake, Los Angeles, Arroyo Cantova, he was known the length and breadth of California. So where to begin is a problem that... Um, <laughs> but no, come along with me. Come, we shall ride together back to the year 1851, to the mining towns of Angels Camp and Sonora, back to the gold country of the High Sierras. It is midday. The sun blisters down upon the rickety, unpainted stagecoach, rattling through the mountainous open country between Angel's Camp and Sonora. Four people occupy the broiling interior of the stage. A beautiful young girl with dark eyes, raven tresses, and cheeks like the blushing rose, and three men. One of the men, young, tall, well-dressed, seems asleep in one corner of the stage. Another stares out the open window with scarcely a noticeable flicker of his pale lashes. But the last man... Ah, blast the stage company anyway. If they can't run their coaches on time, the least they can do is provide decent conveyances for their passengers. You forget, my dear uncle, but this is mining territory, not the civilization of Philadelphia or New York. Forget it, Clarita. How could a man forget it when he's carrying with him some $50,000 in gold? Oh, blast it all. I do keep forgetting that man in the corner. Do you, uh, you suppose he heard? Unless he is more dead than asleep. I should judge it quite lightly, Uncle. Yeah, confound it. I don't like his being aboard, coming on at the last minute the way he did. He's Mexican, too, by the looks of him. For all we know, he might even be this, this outlaw Murrieta. I hardly think so, Uncle. Or have you forgotten that Captain Harry Love is traveling with us? Oh, yes, 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 that's right, that's right. All of us, uh, all of us are pretty safe from Murrieta with you along, eh, Captain Love? I've told you before, Mr. Blake, I'm no stage guard, and I'm no hero. 
I've been hired by the state of California to bring in Joaquin Murrieta, dead or alive. I'm going to Sonora to swear in a posse to help me do that job. Not to protect any gold that's riding aboard this stage. Oh, of course, Captain, of course. But uh, but if Murrieta did try to stop this stage before we reach Sonora... If he tries it, Mr. Blake, I'd advise you not to put up any resistance. I won't. Handling Murrieta's band is no two-man job. That is excellent advice, Senor Blake. Confound it, so you weren't asleep. <laughs> well, I'm afraid you make sleep in your presence a bit difficult, Senor Blake. Mm. And if you're worried about my knowing of the gold you carry aboard, please do not be. It was common knowledge in Angel's camp long before we left. How do you figure that, mister? Well, everyone there knows that Luis Cardoza's mine, El Terreno Oro, recently changed hands. That a Senor Blake and his niece, Senorita Vallejos, have uh, deprived him of it. Deprived him, Senor? If you're accusing us of having robbed Ah, uh, perdón, of... Senor, Senorita. It is perhaps my grasp of English that is at fault. I employ the incorrect word, then? Incorrect? Why, you... Who are you, you... mister? Anyone in Angel's camp will inform you that I am Don José Sebastián, Señor Capitán. And what's your interest in my advice to Mr. Blake about Murrieta? A very personal one, my dear Capitán. Like you, I am no hero. And if it happens that we do encounter this Joaquín Murrieta, I should dislike very much to lose my life in an attempt to save Luis Cardoza's, uh... I mean, of course, Señor Blake's gold. Confound you, Sebastián, that was no slip of the tongue. And no fancy apologies are going to save you now. <laughs> Shots. What's, what, what's happening here? In this territory and with $50,000 in gold aboard? <laughs> well, surely even you could surmise, Senor Blake. You will soon have the opportunity of following the advice of El Señor Capitán Love regarding Joaquín Murrieta. <laughs> the stagecoach halted as the road was suddenly filled with armed and mounted men. A short, smiling, bearded man was obviously in command. Out of the stage, court, senores! Senorita! Franco, Franco! <laughs> it is good to see, face to face, those whose throats one might cut, eh? <laughs> si, es bueno, si! Are these truly Joaquin Murieta's men, Capitan Love? They are, ma'am. Then I am disappointed in your California bandits, Capitan. I had thought this Murrieta a dashing, romantic figure, and he appears as a bearded clown. That is not Murrieta, ma'am. That is his lieutenant, Jack Three Fingers. Tres dedos. We've got the strong box, Jack. Bueno, amigo, bueno. Yeah. Mil gracias, señora. Señorita. Oh, you have been so generous. I do not have the heart to take your lives. That is good of me, no? <laughs> See, it is good. <laughs> And I would advise you to remain here a half hour. Maybe I change my mind if you do not, eh? Vamos, <laughs> amigos! We are doing it! It was perhaps some six hours later that they arrived at Sonora. Of the intervening time, there is little to be said here. Don José Sebastián and the lovely Señorita Vallejos spoke politely of weather, of Mexico, of the countryside, of almost anything, in fact, but that which was taking place unknowing, unwanted, unforeseen within their hearts. Let us rejoin the four wayfarers after they have reached their destination. It would appear, Don José, that the time has come for farewells. My thanks to you for having made a tedious journey so bearable. Perhaps the thanks rightfully belong to Murrieta, senorita, who did more, I am certain, than myself to make it so. The only thanks that confounded outlaw deserves is a noose around his neck, and I'll not rest until I face it there with my own hands. An understandable emotion, Senor Blake. Still, it might not be wise to speak aloud of vengeance against Murrieta. He has many friends, it is said, whose ears are keen and tongues facile. I don't suppose you'd be a friend of Murrieta's by any chance, Sebastian? I, senor? <laughs> no, no, far from it. For with the possible exception of yourself, senor Capitan, I would say that I am Joaquin Murrieta's worst enemy. Some 15 minutes later, this enemy of Murrieta's entered a modest home near the outskirts of Sonora, 
There was nothing remarkable about the place or its occupants, except perhaps that one of those occupants had but three fingers on one hand. <laughs> I tell you, Joaquin, it is to love. 50,000 pesos, American, in gold. I tell you, Joaquin, it was as simple as picking walnuts from the tree. Huh? <laughs> it was well done, Tres Dedos, very well done. Oh, gracias, Joaquin, gracias. I like my pay in something more substantial than words, Muretta. Oh, may I ask what you have in mind, Senor Arkansas? The gold, Murrieta, the gold. Let's divvy it and get out of this town. You seem to be laboring under a misapprehension, Senor Arkansas. The gold is to be returned to its rightful owner, Luis Cardosa. Luis Cardosa? See, si. this Senor Blake robbed him of it by forged documents. And I do not like men such as this Senor Blake. I don't care who you like. We took that gold, it's ours now. And it's gonna stay that way. No fancy-dressed, simple-minded mix is gonna tell Arkansas what's gonna happen. For that, maybe you get your throat cut just a little, eh, Senor Arkansas? Put away that knife. But, Joaquin, this one deserves a little lesson, eh? Put the knife away. Uh, see, see, Joaquin, I put it away. The next time you try a trick like that, three fingers... There will be no next time, Senor Arkansas. For you will not supply him with the provocation. Once again, I tell you what I said when I, you first asked permission to join my band. My men are well fed, well clothed, well horsed. We all share equally in whatever spoils there may be to divide. But as leader, I and I alone decide what spoils are to be taken and what disposition is to be made of them. Is that clearly understood, senor? Oh, I tell you, Joaquin, I do not like that. He is bad, that one. We shall hear from the Senor Arkansas again. Ah, uh, perhaps, amigo, perhaps. But until then, we have other things to do. Ah, see, si, the gold. You really intend then to return it to this Luis Cardoz? No, not I, amigo. But you, and at once. Me, Joaquin? But what of you? I have said I do not like men such as Senor Blake. Fortunately, my dislike for him does not extend to other members of his family. <laughs> my uncle's gardens, Don Jose. They are lovely, are they not? Si, senorita. Quite lovely. And a garden reflects the nature of the one who cares for it. This one, soft, gentle, centered of the rose, could only have been tended by one such as you. Don Jose, why did you say you were Joaquin Murrieta's worst enemy? <laughs> oh, my dear senorita. Must that man intrude even on a lovely night like this? Why did you say it, Don Jose? Would not any honest man feel that way about an outlaw, a thief, and a murderer? Are you certain that Joaquin Murrieta is that? Can there be any doubt, senorita? Everyone has heard the tales concerning him. His bloodthirsty exploits, his cruel and ruthless crimes... And does everyone know, senor, that his brother was hanged by a lynch mob in Sacramento on the sole grounds that he was a Mexican? That his young, beautiful bride was brutally murdered by a band of gold-crazed Americans? How do you know of this, senorita? Though my mother was American and Senor Blake's sister, my father was Spanish. His estate in Mexico bordered that of a family named Feliz. Their daughter, Carmen, was my dearest friend before she met and married Joaquin Murrieta. You knew Carmen? You... But my dear senorita, surely these things you say only provide a stronger motivation for this Murrieta to lead a life of pillage and crime. No, no, senor. Carmen could never have loved a man who possessed the slightest instinct toward murder or theft. But his unhappy past could have led him into a life devoted to vengeance, to balancing the scales of justice that were falsely weighted by greed, desire for power, or the sheer ignorant stupidity of blind hatred toward other races or religions. You speak with great eloquence and emotion, senorita. It is impossible to doubt your belief in the truth of what you say. But why do you seek to convince me of all this so strongly, senorita? Perhaps because I feel that Joaquin Murrieta's worst enemy is not you, 
but a wall of cynicism and mockery that he has built to protect himself from further hurt. Perhaps it is because I once saw a gay, laughing young caballero right up to the estate next to ours. And in his face and laughter there was a love and a trust that encompassed the entire world and all its peoples. But, but if you saw Murieta, then you must know that... See, see, I know. And yet you said nothing to your uncle or Capitan Love. Why, Clarita? Perhaps it is because that gay, laughing caballero has dwelt within my heart ever since. Oh, Clarita. Clarita, you... Uh, I am far from being certain, senorita, that a wall of cynicism is a man's worst enemy. It can serve him well as protection at moments like this. Then, then that is your answer to what I have just said? No, senorita. It is the only answer I can give to what is approaching along the road from Sonora. Approaching along those horses? See, si. mounted men riding boldly at a gallop along open road means only one thing in this territory. Vigilantes. Vigilantes? Then somehow they must have learned that you... See, si, see. Si. And that is why I can never give an answer to the beautiful thing you told me, Clarita. For always my reply must be drowned in the thunder of flying hooves. Hooves that beat the earth like a drum roll announcing the inevitable execution of Joaquin Murieta. to say that Sebastian actually is Murieta? That's right, Mr. Blake. One of his men turned renegade, the one called Arkansas. He told us about it. Oh. Said Murieta was heading this way. Where is he? In the gardens. In the gardens with my niece. Go after him, Captain. I'll give a thousand dollars in gold to the man who gets him. Let's go, men. After him. <laughs> The oh-so-generous Senor Blake was quite safe in his munificent offer to purchase the life of a fellow human for $1,000 gold. For not that night were the thundering hoofs of the horses ridden by Capitan Love's vigilantes to beat the drum roll of Joaquin Murieta's death. But there was no joy in Joaquin's heart over his escape. There was no refuge in the well-hidden wooded arroyo in which he and his men had established their headquarters. For he had been followed there, followed implacably, relentlessly, inescapably. He could not hide from the fact, could not shut his eyes to the truth, could not close his ears to the sound of his fate. For when the western wind danced through the branches of the live oaks that hid him from the world, he could hear it. That gay, laughing caballero has dwelt within my heart ever since. And in the clear, rippling waters of the mountain stream, as clean and pure as the heart of her who spoke, he could hear it. Has dwelt within my heart ever since. Not even the lightning, throwing itself from crag to crag in childish glee, could drown her voice in the booming of his boisterous laughter. Within my heart, within my heart, within my heart. Why must it be that he, Joaquin Murieta, of all men, should be deprived of all he wanted most in this life? Why should he be deprived of home and, and wife and children? Why should he not know the blessings of freedom, of honest toil, and the deep happiness and peace and contentment that comes from loving and being loved? And then he knew Joaquin Murieta would disappear in the Sierra and never be seen again. And who would have been foolish enough to dream that the gay, laughing caballero with the beautiful bride could have any connection with a wanted for murder sign a thousand miles to the north? A 
Hernández. Hernández. Sí. Sí. What is it, Joaquín? Saddle my horse. See to it, I have a blanket roll and provisions enough for a week. Blanket roll? Provisions? You are going on a long journey, Joaquín? Very long, amigo. Very, very long indeed. I am... Shh, shh. Someone comes in a hurry, Joaquín. Si. Sí, it is Benton. But he should be with Tres oh, Dedos. Oh, oh. Joaquín? Joaquín, there's the devil to pay up in Angel's camp. Louis Cardoza's been murdered. Cardoza? Murdered? Yeah. The gold we brought back rims has gone. But that's not the worst of it. Captain Love's vigilantes have arrested three fingers. There's a necktie party planned for tonight. They plan to hang Tres Dedos? He's innocent? As innocent as you are. Hernandez, the Black Stallion. Pronto. Si, sí, Joaquin. And forget the blanket roll and provisions. It would seem that the journey I'm going to make shall not be as long as I thought. Now, one seldom finds a cool, collected observer in the feverish emotions of a lynch mob. That night in Angel's camp was no exception. So history's reports of the events that transpired are rather garbled. But of certain things, I can tell you with some exactness. For example, a conversation between three people in a hotel room overlooking a roaring mob in the street below. <laughs> Listen to them down there. Listen. <laughs> Oh, they've got blood in their eyes, all right. Murrieta's blood. Please, close the window, Uncle. Very well, my dear. But you've only got yourself to blame, you know. I told you not to come along with us. It won't be any tea party when they get their hands on Murrieta. <laughs> and there's no doubt that they will, eh, Captain? None, Mr. Blake. I'm positive of that. Once he learns that Three Fingers is in danger of hanging, nothing can stop him from attempting a rescue. Nothing, Capitan Law? Nothing, ma'am. And with my men covering the entire town, he's bound to be spotted. Once he is, and that mob gets its hands on him, well, the state of California pays me the same, whether I bring him in alive or dead. I can tell you also of a conversation held at the town jail. A conversation passing through a barred window between a prisoner within and a black shadow crouching in the still blacker shadow of the prison wall. You were insane to come here, Joaquin. That mob could stretch a dozen ropes tonight as well as one. They... Querido Tres Dedos, only answer my questions, quickly. Do you know who killed Luis Cardoza? Si, it was Arkansas. Arkansas? You are certain? With my own eyes, I saw him. Arkansas. He is almost certain to still be in town. Courage, Tres Dedos. The limb of a tree is not yet bending beneath your weight. But it was not 30 minutes afterwards that the surging mob stormed the jail, dragged Tres Dedos from within, and prepared to send him to his death. And then... Just as the rope was thrown over a stout limb and the ceremony of savagery was about to begin... Murrieta! There he is on that horse! Murrieta, get him! Get him! And the body's over here, Captain. We brought it into the livery stable. <laughs> Murrieta must have been crazy trying to face that mob alone. I told you he would, Mr. Blake. <laughs> there is no possibility of a mistake. Oh, no, ma'am. He was masked, but that black suit of his with the silver buttons was a dead giveaway. He's in the office here, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad about that three-fingered pal of his getting away in the excitement. Nobody was paying much attention to him, I guess, what with Murrieta being the hall show. It and... doesn't matter too much. We'll get him. This is the man we were really after. Take off his mask. Yeah, sure thing, Captain. It's tied on, kind of tied. There. There you be. Oh, the fools. The blasted, stupid fools. Yeah. What's the matter? Is there something wrong? This isn't Morietta. It's a renegade from his band named Arkansas. Arkansas? But it can't be. Why, the clothes... It's clear enough what happened. Morietta found Arkansas, knocked him unconscious, changed clothes with him, and then propped him up on that horse and had one of his own men pretend to spot him. 
And from then on, the mob took him. What places was that? See, look at the door, Captain. There's a knife sticking there, taking a piece of paper again. It. What is it, Captain? What does it say? Doesn't seem to make much sense, Mr. Blake. It just says, always within my heart, too. Always within my heart, too. Now, what kind of confounded nonsense is that? What? Now, what's the matter with you, Clarita? <laughs> Nothing, Uncle. Nothing at all. Just a private little joke between me and the gay, laughing young caballero. This is Marshall Thompson again. You know, hearing the story tonight, how Joaquin Murrieta was entirely lost when deprived of a family, reminded me of an old saying that we have all heard. No man is an island unto himself. Much as we strive for independence, it only takes a little sorrow, a little pain, a little poverty, a little fear, to make us realize how much we need the help of others. And if we depend on our neighbor for support, how much more should we look to our Maker, on whom all of us depend? We need God's help every minute of the day. And if we're wise, we'll acknowledge that need by praying to Him daily with our families for the help our families need. We'll make family prayer a normal, natural part of our daily lives because we know and believe that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood Family Theater has brought you Ricardo Montalban and Lillian Baev in Joaquin Murrieta with Marshall Thompson as your host. Others in our cast were Wally Mayer, Howard Culver, Joseph Duvall, Nestor Paiva, Tim Graham, and Raul Chavez. The story of Joaquin Murrieta was dramatized by Sidney Marshall, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, who was directed for Family Theater by Jaime Del Valle. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Gene Baker expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week at this time when family theater will present Patricia Neal and Dan O'Herlihy in Sir Lancelot of the Lake. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is heard throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.